Welcome to today's lecture on analysis of an axial piston swash plate type hydrostatic pump discharge flow characteristics. Now, um, I would like to mention that I have uh, written here hydrostatic pumps, I have mentioned hydrostatic pumps, but basically we call it rotary hydrostatic units which includes pumps and motors. We shall describe a pump, we will analyze a pump here, however the analysis for the motor will be more or less same considering their flow, pressure etcetera. <coughs> now here in figure 1 what I have shown a typical axial inline linear piston which is simply called as linear piston swash plate type hydrostatic pumps. Now why it is axial inline linear pistons? The first of all axial means you will find that the pistons are parallel to the axis of the shaft. Inline means all uh, pistons you can put if you develop that will be in a line which is acting one after another. Linear means in that way it is we can call the motion is linear and uh, the piston is for the pistons. Now swash split means <coughs> this one is the swash split which I will describe in the next slides also. So that is why it is called swash split type pump. Now <coughs> uh, this pump such pumps it is widely used it consists of several pistons equispaced longitudinally equ equidistance and parallel to the central driving shaft in a common cylindrical block, block called as barrel. Now this one is the barrel, this is the drive shaft and these are the pistons. These pistons are laid on a pitch circle diameter and angle between two pistons are constants also. Okay. Now this is the swash plate which is driving which is fixed positionally fixed means it is not rotating it can be only the tilting angle can be changed or may be also fixed for fixed displacement type. The rota rotation of main barrel forces the pistons to rotate with it. Ends of the pistons are connected to shoe called the slipper pads and these shoes slides on this inclined plate which is first plate. There is a spring inside the cylinder which forces this barrel to touch the valve plate in the other side. Now while it is uh, rotating the barrel will rot rotating the piston will reciprocate um, along the axial directions. However, we need another a, a retainer which holds all the slipper pad um, together so that it is not de detached because there is no physical connections between the swash plate and the slipper pad. So, while it is moving in these directions, there is no pulling only by a spring arrangement this is kept contact with the valve plate as well as, as, well as the source plate. Uh, the, the squeezing action causes delivery to an um, upstream system at a higher pressure through the discharge manifold. In case of the motor the phenomena is vice versa. Now during one revolution the piston moves inside the barrel from top right to bottom left. Top right means this is as it is in the right side we are saying top right and to the left. The horizontal distance between the top right and the bottom left are fixed and flexed inclusion of swash plate. This means 
if we increase this inclination this length will increase that movement will increase which is called stroke length the stroke length will increase. The geometric displacement for revolution called the sweep volume already defined that remains constant for a constant tilting angle of the swash plate. Thus the name of the pump fixed displacement when this remain fixed we call it fixed displacement. The end of the piston nearer to the port plate moves closer to the plate during one half of the rotation and away from it during the other half. You can understand that for one half it is in the mode of compression in other half it is in the mode of fraction. Two opening on the valve plate covering almost 180 degree angles each are provided for suction and discharge manifolds for the pump. The details plate will be shown later. During the movement of the piston over the opening of discharge manifold, the high pressure fluid is delivered into the discharge manifold and during the piston movement over the suction manifold, fluid inflows from the suction manifold into the piston chamber. By varying the angle of inclination of swash plate, the swept volume can be varied and then the pump is called variable displacement pump. Now, in this figure, if we see that um, we have put, we have shown this in this way and if we uh, consider this plane, then the plane behind that will be for the direction, if we consider the direction of rotation, direction of rotation is, is the clockwise. In that case, so this will be from this side to this side will be the compression phase and other side will be the suction phase and the manifold, valve manifold we are talking about this is uh, one and this is another, one is for suction, uh, another is for discharge. So, in case of pump this will be for discharge because this is in the compression mode and this in, in the suction mode. So, this will be the suction manifold. Now, to find out the flow rate for a piston, we put q i, i is for the ith pistons. It is simply the prime derivation of the volume. Here the negative sign has come due to the axis considered. We will come later in that, but uh, the quantity is that the volume which is in trapped the rate of change of volume will be the flow to a single chamber. Now, the maximum linear movement in one direction of the piston is called stroke. The stroke S p can be given by if we consider the P c d on which the pistons are laid is d p which is equal to 2 s r then we can consider. So, this angle is alpha, the angle of inclination of this first plate is alpha. So, d p by 2 that is r by 2 r r into tan alpha is the stroke at one side and the other side also another d p by 2 into tan alpha. So, we can simply write 2 into d p by 2 into tan alpha is equal to d p tan alpha that is the if we consider from this point to this point, one piston will move in linear, in linear direction by this amount and it is called stroke and this definitely will be fixed for a, fi a, a fixed swash so plate angle <coughs> that means tan alpha itself is fixed. So, when we are analyzing even if for the varial displacement pump because this is uh, our analysis normally will be when at a particular angle, it is fixed at a particular angle then we are analyzing. This means that for the variable piston pumps, 
for a fixed swash plate angle, we will consider the swept volume will be this amount for the angle where we have fixed alpha into the number of piston. The maximum volume V i max the fluid can occupy in the piston chamber is the sum of clearance volume. We will consider now there is a clearance volume and the product of stroke of the pistons and the area of the piston. This means if A p is considered the area of this piston, this diameter is d that means pi d square by 4 is equal to A p. So, A p into stroke length is the piston volume the fluid it is handling plus there will be some clearance volume which we give as a uh, as named as V c. Now, this is fixed for a construction this is fixed, but this volume is needed when we analyze the fluid. Okay. So, V i max is equal to V c plus S p into A p remember this is for one piston. In the displacement of ith piston inside the chamber is y i then from simple similar triangle considerations we get y i is equal to r tan alpha 1, mi co 1 minus cos theta 1. Now, uh, I think this theta 1 the angle covered by the ith piston from the initial position. Okay. Sorry, this um, this theta 1 I must define that we are considering that uh, this access system we will show a little later. We consider that this theta beginning from this point. Okay this axis that means, this we have looking into in this direction and we have drawn here. That means, if I look from the left side towards this barrel then left hand side this axis which is um, perhaps we have given y axis we will uh, uh, the theta is beginning from that point. So, if I consider uh, the ith piston then we have to consider the theta and plus the total angle between the these pistons. Suppose this is i th 1. So, we will consider this angle is that um, this angle into the number of pistons in between say 2 like that. Somewhere I have defined this we will come to that. Now, the volume of piston chamber at any instant is V i. So, V c plus A p s p minus y 1, y 1 now we have defined as a the piston movement. So, S p if it is the total stroke that minus this y i movement is the volume at that instant. Therefore, d V i d t is equal to A p d y by d t. Now, I think this minus sign has come over here due to this derivations that is why we put minus sign here. So, that ultimately it will again become positive. So, Q we can again define uh, like this yeah this is right this minus sign as it is coming over here. So, we originally wrote these equations and which is coming ultimately the positive signs. So, therefore, this q 1 for a particular pistons can be defined like this. Now, here I have explained the theta i is equal to theta 1 for the 1 pistons. Remember this is suppose this is the piston 1, this was here when theta was equal to 0 and then for ith positions it was the i minus 1 into the angle between two consecutive pistons and theta 1 is the rotation of the piston 1. Okay. 
where this uh, uh, here it will be subscript O will be there. So, this is the angle between two um, pistons. It is given by 360 degree divided by z, this is simple where z is the number of pistons. Now, the total flow rate into the suction this y i positive or discharge y i is negative manifolds are given by the same equations will be same because this we are only this defining the quantity, but we have to consider for y positive and y negative separately because if we integrate together ultimately it will become 0 because one is in positive and other other is in the negative. So, that consideration we have to make, but if we um, do it then this will be the expression. So, while we are considering q i then we will consider for the pistons which are in the suction zone or which are in, in the compression zone. Ideally this should be equal but if we consider the leakages then definitely these two will be different. Sign of y i automatically comes from equations that is ok, but to quantify that how much it is pumping we have to take care of this. However, it is to be noted that the odd number of chambers now here is the point that at any instant y i positive for z plus 1 by 2 number of chambers or z minus 1 by 2 number of cham chambers including y i is equal to plus 0 and minus, minus 0. What does it mean? At any instant suppose one piston in, in the dead zone, dead zone means which is in between these two manifold. Still we may write that z plus 1 number of piston in suction and z, z minus 1 number in uh, suction mode, suction and compressions or it will be next moment it will be just opposite that we have to take care of that. That is again automatically will come from the equations because the negative sign will appear for the negative direction motions. But Suppose, if there are 7 pistons then what may happen the 4 pistons either in the suction side and 3 piston in compression side or vice versa momentarily 1 piston is at the dead zone 3 pistons in the suction and 3 piston in the delivery. However, we need not take care of specially suppose we are working with 4 pistons in the suction zone the fourth piston when it will come in the dead zone automatically their y 1 will appear 0. The for the even number of chambers it is just z by 2 either the 3 piston say for example, 6 pistons are there 3 piston is suction and 3 pistons in compression. Now, what will happen? for the dead zone when the pistons are dead zone you will find two pistons are in dead zone. So, at that time two pistons are suction and two piston compressions, but again that two for that plus y i is equal to 0 and minus y i is equal to 0. Only uh, uh, you have to just take a little care while you are calculating this. Now, using the <coughs> integral average of the above equation, the nominal discharge flow of the pump may be expressed as we are using the summation sign instead of that if we integrate then what we find this is this is a constant part because we are considering on a fixed alpha and omega that is the speed 
we will consider that is also constant that is not varying and z is the number of pistons. So, this we take outside only the integration parts inside remains sin theta 0 to pi d theta and which gives this will be the average flow. Okay. We have integrated from half of the angle, so 0 to pi. So, this will give us the nominal average flow. During the general flow equation, uh, dividing the general flow equations with the average flow which we have estimated like this, the equation derived above we get the normalized flow rate which is given by this. So, this is the normalized flow rate that means, if we plot this one this automatically it will give us the ripple. Now, we consider z dash be the number of pistons in same phase at an instant that means, z dash is equal to now z plus 1 by 2 or z minus 1 by 2 in case of odd number in case of even number this is simply z by 2 here I have expressed. Okay. So, for even odd number and even number we express it this way. Now, we can show that uh, this expression because now we are considering for one side only. Hmm. So, we will take here z dash and for that this equation can be expanded in this form. This is a matter of mathematics. So, you can expand in this form and then for simple trigonometric consideration this reduces for even and odd cases as follows. For odd number of pistons the q 0 will be expressed by this pi by z cosec pi by 2 z cos theta 1 minus pi by 2 z for theta is equal to theta 1 pi by n sorry this will be again z not n this is z. <coughs> z is the number of piston here also this express for even number of it becomes like this. Now, these two expression over here the amplitude similar way we can define the amplitude in this way and uh, the period of pulse is pi by z 0 this is of course, for the odd number of pistons for uh, even number of pistons you can see the differences. We have now used subscript e, e and O for uh, odd and even. Okay. So, you can find this amplitude and the period here period is higher and amplitude uh, is also greater than this. And as we have already revealed from our phase analysis and these earlier two equations that is that if you uh, oh, I would not say the simplify, but I would say that in phase analysis we have used a simplified formula. Here this formula is coming exactly fitting to this linear piston pump, but you will find this uh, value will be very close. Now, we will consider an actual pump which we would uh, like to analyze for the ripple. Now, what we should consider when we, uh, we will go for actual analysis of a pump our main purpose definitely we should find out the flow there and ripples pressure pressure ripple all, all such uh, parameters related to the performance of the pump. In that case the main important thing we must consider the leakage also. Now, the flow rate from the orifice equations that is already known we can 
write this equation considering this this sign depending on this sign this will be this will indicate the which direction it is flowing then this is the coefficient of discharge and this is the area general orifice area of ith piston that orifice area we need to calculate okay the cd coefficient of um, um, the discharge that also we should verify for a depending on the size of the orifice shape and size of the orifice now this is usually there is no way you have to go for the experiment but uh, what is done normally depending on the orifice geometries uh, irrespective of their physical sizes depending on the shape at different opening of such orifices the CD R will be fixed. Say for example, one in one case the size of this total maximum area through this orifice is say 1 centimeter square, in other case it is 5 centimeter squares, but their shape are same. So, when that particular orifice opening for whether it is 1 maximum 1 centimeter or 5 centimeter coefficient of discharge is same. When in one case say half centimeter square, in other case 2.5 centimeter square, then is also C D is same. And also it is found that this C D remains more or less constant from the minimum opening to maximum opening. So, for a particular type of orifice these are fixed. Now, here the P i is the in instantaneous fluid pressure within the chamber, P d is the discharge pressure, A o i already I have described the cross sectional area through which the discharge is taking place, we will ex explain further, C d I have already explained and rho is the fluid density. Sometimes this rho we have defined as rho o for oil. The cross sectional area A O I is the is to be calculated knowing the instantaneous pore geometry as shown in the figure 3, 4, 5 we have we will come next to that in the next slides and how to calculate the area. Now, I, as I told that C D um, we can uh, judge from the shape, but at every instant we have to calculate this orifice area, how it is calculated. Now, this figure only shows that different positions and this is the uh, piston and we are uh, you, you can say this is the nomenclature here the A O I apparently here we are looking that this is a constant, but this is not depending on the position this is varying and we have to calculate this area. Now, how it is varying? Here, this is the port we have shown, the manifold. This is actually continuous. On the barrel, we could leave this whole as a uh, bore equal to the diameter of the piston. That means, this could be made a through hole, but you will find normally this this hole the cylindrical hole up to almost up to the end, but end is not the cylindrical hole instead of that there will be a small kidney port. This is kidney pattern it is written kidney pattern usually it will be of this shape. Now, interestingly say this is included angle it is I this angle is actually you may consider ideally it should be equal that means this is the dead band zone from this point to this point is the dead band zone this is almost equal ideally it should be equal but you may find that it it is at one side it is less other side it is slightly more this is due to the fact that 
depending on the direction of rotations in case of pump one if this side is taken less and this side is taken a slightly more the performance will be better than ideally if it is taken exactly equal. Even this total angle sometimes taken a slightly larger than this angle. Okay. So, but this, this needs a dynamic analysis of this pump for from the static analysis we will not be able to understand why this angle should be taken more. If you go for the diamond, uh, dynamic analysis if we look into the pressure build up for, for of the oil entrapped inside the piston during this dead zone we will be able to understand. However, while we are going for the static analysis still for the opening of the orifice we have to consider these angles. And here what we find in this port say this is the kidney port and here we will find a groove. This groove uh, later I will show the shape of this groove like a, a pyramid. This groove is called silencing groove. If this groove is not provided then we will find when this kidney port of the barrel coming contact with this valve manifold the rate of increase of the orifice is very high and the pressure transient in the fluid will be erratic it is unpredictable. Whereas, if you provide the silencing groove this uh, pulsation in the pressure will be controllable as well as there will be less noise. So, that is why it is the name of this groove is the silencing groove. It is actually contro controlling the pressure pulsation which reduces the noise. Okay. So, we need to calculate depending on the shape what are the areas. Now, here in details it is again shown that what might be the groove. In, in this case say here the section A, A it is a flat type groove. That means, if you take a say this depth is remain same, this depth is remain same, but uh, this is also you can say rectangular type. That means, you can put a cutter and then you can uh, say side an end mill cutter and you can make this, this slot uh, like this. But here the groove is called ramped bottom this is and constant width geometry. This means that groove is like this, but there is a slope this is a ramp this is a flat bottom constant width whereas, here it is a ramped bottom constant width. In this case this is a flat bottom ramped width geometry that means, this is flat, but this is gradually increasing whereas, here it is a ramped bottom ramped width geometry that means, this is also inclining and here is also the if we consider the surface area that is increasing, but I would say this is the most popular one which are used for this um, pump. This is the best one we should say uh, and also if you look into this manufacturing of this group will be more expensive than this because we have to make this depth which is taper you can just imagine of machining this is easy this also may not be difficult because we can incline the cutter, but this is very difficult, but perhaps this might be the better one for the uh, silencing point of view. Whereas, widely used one is this one we will analyze this one in the next slides. The total discharge flow of the pump is equal to the net flow generated from each piston chamber instantaneously positioned over the discharge port 
dividing this sum total by the nominal flow we get the normalized flow as in this case we have considered the elaborate equations and this is now coming in this form. Earlier I have shown the simplified one where here we have considered the area coefficient of discharge, sign of the pressure etcetera, but it is more or less similar we have just replaced the flow equations with this little equation. Now, the pressure in each piston at an instant is estimated from the consider bulk modulus as follows. Now, we are considering inside that total volume inside and then we are considering also bulk modulus. Why we have considered such things? Because with the increase and decrease in the pressure in this there will be uh, effect on the uh, fluid compressibility which will ultimately control the pressure which will control the pressure. So, to find out the pressure fluctuation we need to consider the compressibility of the fluid inside the pistons. Now, Q leakage I is the leakage that occurs due to the clearance between the piston and bore and or any other leak paths that exist in the design of the piston chambers. Normally, while we are calculating this uh, pressure development, we need to consider the leakage past the pistons and the bore that is most important. So, that leakage we have to consider within this equation sorry, but the problem is that say here I have shown particularly this leakage is important. Also there might have some leakage through this point also, but we need to consider these leakage characteristics which is uh, two factors we should consider one is k theta and another is the clay clearance. Now, the clearance is from the geometric dimensions measuring those dimensions considering the tolerances we can easily estimate what will be the clearances there, but k theta is the coefficient which we leakage coefficient we need to we need to estimate. You can see this this is there that Q leakage is defined by the instantaneous pressure in ith chamber multiplied by this constant. Now, here the little given k i theta is the leakage coefficient which may vary depending on the capillary leakage passage length which is dependent on theta, theta is the angle that means this length is varying, this capillary pa passage length is varying. So, that is important depending on that this coefficient will also vary. So, depending on theta this will vary and the clearance in ith chamber. However, this k i theta is found mostly experimentally. Now, this clearance normally for a pump we may consider all chamber is having chamber and piston is having equal clearance, but actually it is also varying. So, depending on that I would say the for each and every chamber the k i theta will be different for different theta angles. I mean for the same theta angles when it is coming at the same say suppose if you, even if this length is equal for a pistons pi is also equal for pistons, but depending on this clearance this will vary. However, this we may take almost constant. However, considering more or less same clearances in all piston cylinder we can assign k theta is equal to k i theta is equal to k theta. So, which I have used simply we will k theta. Now, this k theta again will be will vary on the stroke length total stroke length, but if the stroke length is not very high say small stroke length then you will find that there is a little variation in k theta. That means, for a particular type of pump we may consider k theta is constant 
and there will be of course, depending on the length this k theta will vary, but we may consider for a particular pump the k theta is a constant. Again such pump is one pump is tested and k theta is found out experimentally, we may consider all other pumps we can scale up even if we can make a chart from which say 7 pistons pump for a 1000 rpm one is giving 5 liter per minute another is giving 25 liter per minute probably their k theta will be same. The instantaneous rate of change of pressure in the ith piston chamber is given by this is simply that I am not showing the derivation of the equations, but if you derive d p i by d theta if you do it and consider all the equations appropriate equations we will easily arrived into this expression. Now, this is difficult to remember <laughs> suppose if I ask a question on that definitely I will give you this formula do not worry about that, but you should understand and here what we have done inside that as it is a under root we have to take care. So, this should not become minus. So, we have taken the mod of that okay. and beta is the bulk modulus of the oil we are using this again vary with temperature and pressure of course, but for a pump performance within a range may be temperature range may be ambient temperature 45 to 5 degree centigrade to 70 degree centigrade and pressure may be varying from 0 to say 15, 20 mega Pascals, but we will consider only one bulk modulus for such oil. <coughs> now, determination of the port area, we need to find out the port area as I have told. So, we must consider in details what will be the port area. Referring to this figure, the port area remains at a maximum constant when it is completely over the discharge or suction manifold. That means, when this kidney port is on this main manifold, okay, then it is the maximum and maximum area is nothing but this area kidney port area. So, that is the A O I maximum and this is usually you may consider that this is a rectangular port. So, what is done actually this if we would like to find out this area simply we consider this is a straight line and this is another straight line and this is a half circle this is another half circle. That means, if this is uh, included by this phi angle, then we actually take the center from here to here and then pi into uh, sorry this angle into this radius will give this distance that distance into thickness will give the area of the rectangular and then one circular area which is uh, just the diameter we may consider equal to the thickness of this port. Okay. So, that is the maximum area of AOI. What might be the minimum area that when this is coming over this, the this small angular area that means, this is again something like a pyramid. So, if we consider the truncated tip of the pyramid area through that point will be our the area we, we will show that area calculations later not in this lecture, but later we will show this calculations. In the transition region the port are gradually increases to a maximum from 0 when the piston is entering into the manifold, but keep in mind this width I mean this length of this kidney port is more than this silencing groove. So, here this when it is gradually coming over the, the, the this port first it will cover the silencing groove then it will 
start covering the main area of the manifold. So, until this end is coming on the manifold full manifold that means, this until this is reaching here area is gradually varying initially on the groove then on the main manifold that we have to carefully calculate. Now, what uh, this uh, area calculation as I have told that I will see you later show you later that how this area is being calculated. But here I have shown you only the flow ripple considering this is a real pump. Now, this data let us study this this bulk modulus beta is normally 10 to the power 9 mega Pascals some sometimes it is taken a it is sometimes 9 into 10 to the power 8 something like that it is taken coefficient of discharge is 0 0.62 that means this I would like to mention that usually these groups and uh, are made in such a way that orifice so that we can use this uh, coefficient 0 0.62. We have studied the von Mises criteria when to determine this C D. Usually we design the orifice to have our coefficient of discharge is equal to 0 0.62. However, as I told for uh, depending on the pump, uh, pump manufacturers they also can define this what should be the coefficient of discharge we should consider or we can find experimentally in the laboratory. <coughs> now, angular extent of the barrel orifice that means that kidney port on the barrel that is usually one chamber is 30 degree. angular extent of silencing groove 11 degree that is the pyramid type we have taken 11 degree. Maximum opening area of the silencing groove A g is 2.25 into 10 to the power minus 5 meters. Now, here what is the maximum opening of this groove that uh, I will show later that what area actually we are considering from the orifice. It is not on the plane on which the barrel is moving rather this this is barrel plane and below this the this is the ramped groove. So, we consider this area for the groove maximum of that is A g not the surface area we will show later. Maximum area of each barrel port A k that means this is 30 degree opening for that it is taken instead of mentioning the groove width we have taken that this is the opening of the barrel port that means this is the maximum area of the barrel port. This means that initially when it, it has started opening the area will vary from 0 to 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 5 until this groove is completed. After that from 2.25 to 3.75 this area will increase and then when this kidney port of the barrel will come on the kidney port of the valve plate then fully then the maximum opening will be 3.75 into 10 to the power minus 4 and this will continue up to the end. Of course, at the ending there is no groove, but that will also gradually decrease the kidney port will gradually move from the main manifold groove. That is why you will normally find that in pump even in motor as the silencing groove are put in the one direction on the for the best performance you will find the direction of rotation is mentioned there. So, we should we should we must maintain that direction. Now, leakage coefficient k here we have even we have not used the k theta because k is constant for a pump. 
irrespective of the stroke length we have taken just single k. So, a split tilde angle alpha is 18 degree. Nominal volume of the single piston V0 is 22.85 into 10 to the power minus 6. This is the no, no nominal volume and the pitch radius we have taken 5.501 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter. You can this means that how much 0 0.05 meter uh, this means 5 centimeter 5.5 centimeter is the diameter. Now, here I have not mentioned what is the uh, number of pistons this just I would like to mention the number of pistons for the same parameter we have taken the number of pistons 7, 8 and 9 for the analysis, but this is basically a data of a 7 piston machines. Rotational speed just for one calculation we have taken 238 rad per second how much it will be it will be perhaps 1500 rpm like that and this density is 850 kg per meter cube density of the oil. I would like to mention that if it is given not given um, you can take it from 830 to 850 anything in between the effect of this on such calculations for that much variation will not be much. Okay. Here I have given this this two angle and delta is equal to 0 and then for that we have plotted these equations look at this for 9 pistons the ripple is coming like this. Please note that we have considered the overall volume displacement is same displacement we have not mentioned the diameter of the pistons. So, therefore, what we have considered from, from the average flow is same considering that for 9 piston you can see what are the ripple and for 7 pistons the this one is the 7 piston from blue, blue one, but as you see for the 8 piston it is increasing. Now, this we have already shown that in case of even pistons this will be higher by the normal phasor equations. Here actually we have put the we have used the actual equation to plot the flow and then we have shown this what will be the ripple. It can be seen that from the analysis of the ideal case flow ideal case flow the pump with even number of pistons has large pulse time period and also larger amplitude than the odd number counterpart as we have discussed earlier in the phasor analysis such ripples are undesirable due to the resulting large fluctuation and noise that means we should not go for even number of pistons. So, these are the references I, I suggest that you should read all these three papers to understand uh, this phenomena this how this flow ripples flow are calculated in details, but this we have considered only a simplest pump this pump may be more complicated depending on the pivoting point of the swash plate and others, but uh, that is only you have to add uh, you have to take care of the geometric and trigonometric lessons there. So, thank you for listening.